Okay, I'm going uh, to show some of my uh, recent work on uh, GTK uh, GUI binding for uh, RED. I'm using uh, Genie as an uh, IDE for my work. Um, got uh, all the RED bindings in here. So here's the GTK one. And previously, last year, or the past year and a half already, I think I made a GTK plus binding uh, for Red System. And I'm putting a, a Red binding on, on top of that now. That's all very preliminary. This is uh, the first three days work or so and uh, it's all going uh, to shift a bit because uh, now that we can make start making uh, high level dialects in red uh, it's an open question whether the, uh, the GUI dialect for red system at a lower level is still uh, useful and I'm reusing uh, part of it now building the high level red binding on top of it and in some cases that's very convenient and in other cases it's less convenient so when I start optimizing the code I'll have to shift it around a bit and uh, shift the balance between red and uh, red system code and uh, I'll uh, probably split off uh, part of the red system binding into a separate file which is not needed for the red binding on top of it but that's uh, still uh, an uh, open uh, question for myself that I'll find out during uh, development. This is the uh, original uh, red system binding, which is uh, a relatively large binding at uh, about 1600 uh, lines. And the red binding on top of it is much smaller because it can uh, reuse most of this. I don't really care about network right now. Oh, got a connection again. Um, I had some. Uh, I had a series, whole series of examples in Red System, starting with the uh, simple uh, Hello World which is basically uh, one or two lines. You uh, include the, uh, the binding file, which you wouldn't have to do in Rebel because everything is built in. But because this is a compiler system, uh, basically, uh, and it's an extra binding, you have to uh, include it. But if you would uh, uh, ship it in the interpreter, you'd get the same situation as in Rebel, where it would already be uh, included in the uh, interpreter console. So this is the uh, the latest version of the uh, Red System Hello World, and I've got a, uh, a testing repository where I build all the red and red system examples. Oh, this is not it, in the red directory, red test. I put all my bindings in a directory in my home called red, but that is uh, arbitrary. Um, I use my desktop link. Here it is. Here are all the bindings and here is the testing repository and I'm running on Linux so here are uh, all the uh, automatic uh, builds for uh, target platforms. So it builds uh, seven uh, different targets and we're on uh, Intel uh, ARM so I go to the uh, oh, sorry I'm, uh, on Linux uh, Intel so uh, we go to the Linux directory and red, in Red System are all the, uh, all the examples, quite a few. And then Hello World is GTK, Hello World, uh, the simplest one is 
Hello GTK world. Oh, very small. This is the result of what you uh, just saw. Oh. And it's already nice and small and uh, declarative and uh, vaguely uh, rebel like. But now I've got uh, a few similar examples in, uh, in red. Um, oh, I'm not, uh, those are not in the uh, automatic compilation yet, so I have to show the uh, compilation. So I'll have to start by showing the uh, source code. Oh, and actually, I haven't uh, I haven't updated my repositories on uh, on Linux yet. So uh, I get to show if I do have a connection now uh, how. Uh, I update all that stuff with um, with fossil. Actually, I need to be uh, in the test repository again first. Uh, I start out here. I do a fossil uh, update. I hope the connection is not too slow because this is fairly big because all the binaries are in there but I need the new uh, update script that I made Ah, oh, this looks like normal speed We have a slow server, a very old machine so uh, it's preparing uh, the packets uh, on the server before it sends uh, another batch. So this takes a while because this is a 40, 50 megabyte repository already, I think. With uh, incremental versions of all the, uh, all the binary builds. It's, uh, it's downloaded them. Now it's uh, checking out uh, all the binary files. And there's uh, my new uh, download script that wasn't on this laptop yet. And if I now go to my uh, root level, where all the bindings are, I uh, copy the download script uh, here. And then when I start it, it's uh, uh, updating uh, all the bindings from uh, separate fossil repositories just like it just updated the uh, binary repository and it checks out uh, all the new files. So you can use this uh, download script yourself to uh, quickly get uh, all the bindings and uh, get set up for, uh, for doing uh, for compiling your own red and red system programs with the extra bindings. So now I go back to the uh, IDE. And now I should be able to load the uh, new examples. Hello GTK World Red instead of Red System. So this is uh, the new dialect. And I'm trying to make it uh, as close as possible to the existing uh, rebel dialects. <coughs> That's not trivial because uh, there are two of them. There's the classic, uh, well actually there are more third-party dialects, but there are two official uh, rebel dialects for GUI. Uh, the rebel 2 one, which is uh, mature and old and complete. And the new rebel 3 one, which only uh, runs on, uh, on, uh, on Windows in uh, perhaps beta stage uh, at this moment. Um, but this is, uh, this is already more rebel-like than the red system example. If I can 
go back to that. Oh, it's uh, the, the IDE notices that uh, all the files have been uh, renewed by Fossil. So I'll reload it to be sure. Yeah, I, I was looking a bit weird at it because it was an old version. This is the latest version of the red system binding. Uh, I moved everything into the new red system uh, contexts. So uh, uh, the, uh, the, uh, even the hello world example uh, needs to be bound to a context here that's uh, statically at compile time. So it starts with uh, the with GTK. But other than, than that, the, uh, the dialect that you, uh, that you execute within that context uh, is now completely uh, independent of, uh, of any GTK references. Uh, you see that uh, uh, just now it was called GTK view and now it's just view because it's being uh, executed, compiled within the GTK contexts. So the dialect itself is now uh, has no GTK references anymore. So that's already a nice abstraction. But it's still at the low red system level. So it's, uh, it's not really like the, the rebel dialect. So here's the new version. And this looks uh, a lot uh, like uh, the, the rebel dialect. And in rebel uh, 2 you would say a view layout. You would use two functions. But in rebel 3 uh, they're combined into the view function. So uh, I have no, no really no reason to split them. So I did it like the Rebel 3 dialect where you just say view. Well, and then in, uh, in uh, I think in Rebel you always have to use the, uh, the, the text keyword to get a label, don't you? And I thought, yeah, well, why? Well, because if you just write a string, then isn't it logical that it becomes a label? The most simple, the simplest thing you can do with a string. And... Uh, so I, uh, I optimized that away, I think, because uh, if you want to make a, a rich dialect, it's logical that you want to use uh, all data types in your dialect. And if you start everything uh, with a symbol, then uh, you're not making uh, full use of your data types. So um, maybe, uh, maybe there are drawbacks, I don't know, but uh, for starters, I have made it so that uh, as a, as a, a loose string will automatically become a, a simple label. So uh, it's actually shorter than the uh, Rebel 2 GUI dialect and it's even shorter than the Rebel 3 GUI dialect so far in the Hello World. But of course you do, uh, uh, if you compile it, you do again need the, uh, the include. Uh, so, uh, so that makes it a little longer again. Well, let's go back to the uh, um, the example programs we just uh, updated. Uh, these were the red system versions, and now I have uh, the new. Uh, oh yeah, like I said, I haven't. They're not in the test repository yet. I have to compile them. But because I I updated all bindings now, I should now be able to compile it, and I configured uh, Genie uh, to put the compilation under a few uh, function keys. So uh, if I take the red system example, I've got that under uh, F9. So it calls the red system compiler. And it's really very quick. Uh, it compiles in a second or a split second and it compiles to uh, 16 kilobytes. Now back to the new uh, GTK level example. And I've got that under uh, F8. And it calls the red compiler. Ooh. Ach, I've got, I need to update the red compiler as well, of course. And that's in, uh, in, uh, in uh, Git. So I have to update that with Git. And where did I put it here? Uh, in uh, red red. And... Um, I've, ooh. I'm losing the connection, so I need the connection back to update red.
and I've made uh, my own uh, fork on GitHub, so there are two, uh, two repositories uh, working uh, through each other here. So normally, uh, if I check out the official uh, red uh, repository from GitHub, uh, I could do a git pool master, uh, uh, instead of as compared to fossil update that you just saw in fossil. But because of the extra repository, uh, which is really checked out here. Um, oh, by the way, I am supposed to be on the fixed network, so I should have the connection anyway. Uh, uh, I now have to say uh, that I want to pull from the upstream uh, repository. And upstream is uh, uh, a name uh, where you're advised to configure your uh, official uh, repository where you forked from. So I followed that uh, GitHub advice, so I now have to do git pull from the uh, repository upstream and then from the branch uh, master. Oh, and then Git doesn't want to merge. You need to remove the file. I haven't, uh, I haven't had that problem yet. An untracked file would be overwritten. Where is, where is the untracked file? Test? Oh, that's probably a binary that I compiled. But why would it be overwritten? Do you have a test file in the no. repository? Otherwise it couldn't be overwritten, no. could it? So we have a git merging problem because there are... Just the remove it. To the okay. But where, where is it? The last file. Test. Oh yeah, right. So another attempt. Now, there is it. There it is. <coughs> so there's a, a short... Uh, demonstration for uh, how to get all the source files from uh, various places. I don't want wireless. Uh, I've got this button here, I'll switch off wireless. Wireless off. Okay, now I've uh, updated RED to the latest version, now it should compile with F8. And you see that taking a lot longer, because it's in two stages. First you get the uh, red compilation, and that's actually uh, quite quick. But it outputs uh, a lot of red system code, and that then uh, needs to be compiled by the red system compiler. So that takes several seconds. And then you see that it uh, generates uh, 145 kilobytes, as opposed to what was it, 16 or 13 kilobytes yes. for the red system version. So uh, it's, uh, uh, it's an order of magnitude uh, bigger because all the red runtime is in there. While it's really a, a very small example with the same basic complexity and almost the same wording. So for small programs, the, uh, the overhead of red is really uh, quite big. So if you have, are writing a system with many small programs, maybe an uh, operating system with tools or a CGI, uh, it could be interesting to consider doing it in, uh, in Red System if you don't need to do very high level things because it will all, uh, the, the binaries will start faster. So that's an interesting thing to consider. Uh, so when I write all the bindings, you have to have a Red System part anyway, and we've worked with Red System for two years now. So I've got all these Red System bindings, and it's logical to build Red bindings on top of them. But when I do new bindings, I'll probably keep trying to, to, to make it a, a nice Red System binding as well, so that you always have the uh, option to, uh, to drop back to Red System uh, programming if you don't need the, uh, the high level and, uh, and the, the bigger complexity of red. But in most cases, most people will want to do the high level red thing, of course. But there is a, a price to pay. And this is basically what, uh, what the interpreter uh, is in, uh, in Rebel. 
And uh, if you were to uh, install one red interpreter on your system and run everything by scripts in the new red interpreter, you'd get exactly the same effect. But uh, the compiler compiles in the entire uh, red runtime uh, into every executable, so you get the uh, entire uh, rebel equivalent into every executable. Okay, so we uh, compiled it, and um, uh, that goes into the same directory. Um, so I'll we'll go to my GTK repository. It's all a bit, uh, a bit, uh, a bit chaotic with all the bindings and their own subdirectories. So I'll have to jump around a bit. Uh, this is what we saw in the uh, IDE. I don't have a run action uh, bound to a function key because uh, the uh, the output uh, panel uh, in Genie is too small, so it's not much use anyway. So I have to go there in the filer. So here is the same uh, source code with uh, all the examples, and uh, there should be a new binary there now. Hello GTK world, this should be the big one, so let's do a list view to, uh, to see the size. Uh, this is the 141K one, so that's the right one. And it's uh, just compiled, so this is really the thing we just compiled. Do I get a window? Ooh, this is awkward. Do I have some uh, incompatibility with GTK on this system? That's almost impossible because all the red system examples work and they're the same thing. Sometimes you just lose the window. No, it doesn't start. I have to go into a, a terminal to find out why. doesn't say anything, so this looks like a binary incompatibility. These are all the, the dynamic libraries that are uh, linked in by the, uh, by the binding. And for a GTK program this is actually uh, very clean. So there's not much uh, room for, uh, for problems here. And so far all the, uh, all the examples worked. Maybe it's because the screen is split. You have two screens. No, so I've, maybe I've, it's happening in other screen. I've, no, I've, I've cloned them now. So it's, it's one and the same screen now on the Beamer and my laptop. So it, it must be here. So it's, it's really not starting. So that's uh, annoying because if the uh, if that simple example does that, the others will probably too. But we'll uh, we'll try. Let's try the next one. It works on my desktop machine. You'll uh, have to take my word for it for the moment being. Um, I uh, made a, a, a red version of the input field example. And this looks. Uh, Again, a lot like the rebel dialect. Uh, I've got uh, a title in here with the same uh, syntax as uh, rebel 2 or refinement. I'm, I'm, I couldn't really find if it's supported in the rebel 3 GUI, so I'm not sure if the title is done the same way there. But this is the rebel 2 way. Um, and I've got uh, I've got a, a button in here, uh, and when you start differentiating between uh, multiple uh, widgets, uh, you have to give them uh, symbolic keywords. So the input is still uh, a label uh, as a string by itself, but then you have a, a, a field widget, uh, which isn't really called a field in GTK, but an entry, but uh, that's what a field does in Rebel, so I'm using the Rebel terminology as much as possible. So uh, this is really Rebel terminology instead of GTK terminology, so it's a field like in the Rebel dialect. And uh, I've got a, a button widget, 
and they both have uh, uh, text labels for a button uh, that's of course the, the, the label on the button but for a field that's the default text if you want any default text to display in the field that you can override or that you can maybe uh, cho choose to keep there as your input and then there are uh, 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 actions uh, written as code uh, in blocks like in uh, Rebel so this is really uh, this should be exactly like the Rebel code except for the uh, lack of the uh, text button uh, in front of the label as a small optimization would you say that's correct this is the, the Rebel dialect I, uh, I've done very little Rebel 2 GUI programming because it, it doesn't run on, uh, on syllables, so it was very little use to me. So uh, I'm in, uh, in, uh, in new territory here for me. So uh, I'm trying to make it like Rebel, but uh, I haven't really used that myself. So let's try to compile that and see what happens. Do it uh, in the terminal immediately to see if we get any debugging output. Ah, this one works. So that is really strange because the uh, the hello world is much simpler. So I have no idea why that would not st start. Or actually, maybe it returns immediately, although it shouldn't do that. But maybe uh, maybe the hello world re returns immediately for some odd reason. Maybe it has something to do with console output, I don't know. In a way, uh, yeah, I would be very surprised if the GTK was incompatible because I've, I've ran all the, uh, all the red system examples. I'm always using this machine to demo. So here's the, uh, the first uh, uh, GTK window that we can actually see. And it conforms to the uh, specification we wrote in, uh, in, uh, in a slightly optimized rubble format and you see, uh, you see all the elements, you see the uh, input label and uh, the uh, single line uh, entry field with uh, the default here text which is uh, selected so if you don't want it you can immediately start overwriting it and uh, we have the print button that prints it and uh, it's, uh, we didn't specify anything else, so you can resize uh, the, the window and everything will resize. So uh, uh, the, the defaults are not uh, set in stone yet, but uh, it has a, a fairly a nice default layout with uh, some margin and spacing. And that's uh, also like in Rebel. You're supposed to get nice defaults if you don't specify anything, but open source programmers uh, usually don't agree with that. So <coughs> if you do this in uh, basic GTK+, Plus, you get everything with uh, margin zero, because uh, such people really like zero. So you get it uh, packed really tight together, no margins, no spacing, no padding. Uh, so already in the red system binding, I... Uh, I uh, fiddled a bit with other default values so uh, there are better default values in, uh, in my red system binding and uh, the, GT the red binding simply reuses them so uh, they can be changed and uh, uh, that's one of the things about the balance between red system and red if you think about uh, default values for margins and such that's actually a uh, part of the style you could say, the, the overall theme and uh, currently, they're, currently they're quite statically uh, hard-coded in Red System. So you would want to pull them out and uh, make them controllable at the Red level. Uh, so it wouldn't be as logical anymore to have them uh, in the Red System code. So uh, uh, I'll probably get those default values uh, out from the Red System code and make them uh, controllable from the Red level as a sort of very basic uh, theming. So that's about the, uh, the layout, which is as automatic as possible as in Rebel, and uh, very unlike GTK, so that's what I'm uh, adding to it. Now let's see uh, what it does as functionality. 
And then we have to go back to the terminal from whence it came. And if I uh, I'm still selected in the uh, in the first uh, entry field, the first uh, uh, focusable element. Uh, so if I uh, push enter there, uh, I get the uh, print action that we uh, that we programmed. And uh, if I type over it. You see that I can change the uh, input value, and if I do a tab, for example, if I want to do, uh, if I want to handle it by the keyboard, I select the print button, and uh, if I if I push the print button, it does the same action, and that's actually something that needs uh, explaining, because that's uh, not uh, trivial uh, to implement. So if we go back to the specification. Uh, the problem with that is that uh, the uh, input field uh, has an action which I have called uh, uh, engage for the moment being. And actually, that's because there's uh, I couldn't use I tried to use the word action, but it wouldn't take it. So it might be a bug. I have to look into it. But I had to call it uh, engage the function, uh, and because I use it twice in in both uh, widgets. Uh, called faces in rebel, but that's a, a very rebel-like uh, uh, terminology. So I'm not sure if it's good to use uh, in in other dialects. But for the moment being, because it's a short word and it was uh, comfortable to use, uh, I've also uh, put the uh, uh, the widget reference in uh, in a, in a, in a variable a word called face. So the engage function uh, is uh, I separated it out uh, because it's used uh, in two places. But other than that, you could simply uh, uh, put the uh, the print function inside the action, and you could have done it twice. But uh, to centralize that code, I've uh, put it into an engage function, and you see here that. Um, uh, if you are in the uh, input uh, widget, in terms in GTK terms, it's a widget. In Rebel terms, it would be a, the face. Uh, the widget, of course, knows its input value that you typed into it. So uh, it's not hard for the uh, field widget uh, to uh, to output to print uh, its own content. <coughs> And uh, uh, that's uh, in my uh, dialect that's uh, put into the face word, uh, somewhat similar to rebel, but uh, here it may start diver diverging a bit because we're now writing real rebel code into the action. And it's much harder to keep that uh, abstracted between GUI toolkits than the declarative di dialect. Uh, so there uh, will need to be a lot more effort to make uh, 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 actions written in straight red code uh, abstracted between different GUI toolkits. Uh, but the uh, uh, the uh, the widget is uh, is in the face word, like a, a face in uh, in Rebel, uh, but it's very different because in in Rebel the face is really a, a Rebel object, uh, and you can get to it at the Rebel level. And here it's a, a handle to a, a low-level GTK object, and uh, uh, you can't uh, really get to that from the red level without much more binding. Uh, so the content of the face is really quite different between uh, the Rebel GUI and, uh, and this GTK wrapper. Uh, but anyway, it's passed to the engage function, uh, and that's uh, simple because. Uh, if you uh, if you write uh, an action uh, in a widget, you get the the handle to the widget always in the face word, so that's no problem. But then you get the uh, the print button, and uh, the print button is uh, an, another widget. Uh, and if you want to use the print button as well to to to, to print the uh, value from the uh, from the field widget. How do you get to it? You don't know uh, where the, the field widget is. Uh, the field widget knows where it is uh, if you write an action because you get it in the face word. 
but that's no use to the, the button action because it's uh, specified separately from the field action. So how do we uh, get the, uh, the, the, the reference to the field widget uh, into the action uh, for the button widget? And that's exactly what uh, set words are for in the rebel bit dialect. Uh, so uh, I've implemented uh, set words uh, just like in Rebel, so if you put the set word in front of the widget, uh, uh, you get the, the, the handle, the reference to the widget into the set word that you named yourself. So there's a set word line here. So when we, after that, when we uh, arrive at the button, uh, we know that the line word that we came up with ourselves is defined as uh, the, the handle to the field widget which is then the same as the face, but the face is predefined uh, and to get it into uh, uh, another widget or, or in, in further code you write, uh, we have to uh, also give it our own name which is known outside of the field action. So by using a set word we, uh, we put it in an extra handle called line that we can then use in the, uh, in the red code for the action for the button. And that's why uh, uh, both the, uh, the, the field itself and the button can print the value of the field. So that's already uh, fairly complicated in a few lines of uh, specification. And I think I made uh, one more example with uh, the list of uh, widgets that I have so far. And for Red System uh, that was a lot bigger. Uh, here are the widgets uh, that are defined in uh, Red System. So there's a fair amount of widgets there already. And I've been working on and making them available at the red level for about three days now. So I've only got uh, three or four widgets uh, done so far. How do you call back the red card when you get the GTA uh, GUI event? That's a very good question. We'll uh, get to that in a while. Uh, let's see. Why is this? Oh. oh, yeah, examples of the widgets, uh, GTK widgets, the red version. Uh, these are the widgets I have uh, so far at the red level. You implemented controls? Yeah, another very good question. <laughs> very, very simple compose implementation. Uh, the last night for the, before the conference, I uh, I thought, well, for a bit uh, more advanced examples, you really need reduce and compose. So I made very simple implementations of reduce and compose. As a red function or red system called? Uh, red. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, reduce is, uh, uh, is really a bad function because it reduces only one element at a time. Because I can't uh, detect complete expressions yet without access to the, uh, the red internals. But compose uh, is probably uh, fairly you fairly need to do slash next. Yeah, but it's not there. No, so it's not there I'm yet. waiting for you to supply it. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I, I have very simple reduce and compose implementations, uh, and I use that to uh, to give an example here of not specifying the button label uh, statically. Uh, but to be able to define values from the outside of the view dialect. Uh, so I define a, a, a label for the, this button externally here, and then I can uh, pre-process the dialect with a compose to, uh, to get it in. And I, I first I thought, well, I'll, I'll, I'll just support uh, uh, the parent type in my dialect, but then I thought, well, that, that's really... Uh, that, that's not the way to do it, you really should do that in Compose. And then I saw, well, I'll, I'll make a quick Compose implementation. 
And here's the problem uh, uh, Vadim uh, told about. Uh, that if you have a, a multi-line uh, text in Rebel, you have to line it up to uh, the margin, otherwise you, uh, you get the margins from your source code instead of the margins you want in the output. You, you could uh, avoid that by using a caret uh, slash to encode the, yeah. the return line. Yeah, but then, but then it becomes uh, e e even uglier in your, uh, <laughs> in your source code. So this is the way I usually write a, a multi-line uh, text. So it's not <coughs> not really solved in uh, in Rebel syntax. So let's see. We already had a, a label. Uh, a label can be uh, multi-line. So I've got two examples here. Uh, I've got a, a similar uh, field uh, example here again with a set word. So this is really the same example of a uh, field and uh, and a button. Um, with a, a similar uh, engage function here, but because there are two, I now call it do line and do lines, because uh, the input field, uh, the field uh, widget is a single line input, and I implemented the area widget in REPL terms for a multi-line uh, input. So it's really the same example, but instead on a, on a, on a multi-line area input field and then uh, a close button. And there are two uh, engage style uh, functions, one for the single line input and one for the multi-line input. So uh, if I compile this, it takes a few seconds again. So the dog starts twittering on me. No, uh, I'm trying to just explain what Kai is doing. Mm -hmm. um, well, let's assume it's there. Yes, it's there. So this is the uh, the current widget widgets overview for uh, GTK. After uh, three days of uh, putting it on top of the red system binding, uh, yeah, we already were in the terminal. So again. If I, uh, if I press enter, uh, I, uh, I activate the input field, I can tap to the next uh, element, the print button uh, does the same thing uh, through the set word. Uh, in the multi-line field I can't do enter anymore because that uh, is uh, used in the field itself of course. Uh, and the same goes for, uh, for tab. But I can do a control tab in GTK to get to the to get out of the input field anyway. So with control tab I can go to the print button, and then I get the, the same uh, print uh, effect uh, working on the multi-line field. And with shift tab, uh, oh yeah, there's so there's no uh, there's no activate action for the multi-line input because enter uh, doesn't work as an activate anymore. So uh, I, now I really need the print button. You need an, another widget or another set of code to, to get the value out. And uh, while with the multi-line, with the single-line field, you can use the field itself to do that. And, uh, and then there's a, a close button with an obvious function. And if we have another look at the close button, uh, you see that it has, uh, oh yeah, it has this uh, outside definition of the label uh, by using uh, compose, uh, but it has uh, an, an, a fixed, a predefined definition of the action associated with it, and uh, so the action is not in uh, in a block, but in uh, in a special uh, keyword symbol, and that is uh, like the the Rebel three uh, GUI definition. And uh, Rebel 3 uh, defines, predefines the close keyword for a close action. So I've implemented that like the, the Rebel, Rebel 3 dialect. So about your uh, question about the, uh, the, uh, the way uh, the action is handled. We've seen now that at the surface it's as much as possible uh, like Rebel. And where it starts to diverge uh, currently is in the uh, is in the action codes, 
because I use the get field text function here and the get area text. And those are GTK functions that I try to give more rebel-like uh, names. Uh, but they're really one-to-one -one GTK functions that you have to pass the, uh, the, the widget object uh, in GTK uh, to, to, to assert the action on it. Uh, so this is much harder to, to, to abstract uh, between rebel and GTK and other toolkits. Uh, and you can start extracting that when you when you have objects in uh, in red, I suppose. Then you can uh, can uh, can get further with that. But at the moment, uh, this is really a rebel-like, and then here you start to diverge. So the implementation. Um, it's a new file again. Um, we're in the example, so here's the real code. Uh, I've split off a GDK uh, file recently. I've put the, everything in context, so the, the red system uh, GTK binding is in a context and it has a, a sub-level part for the, the graphics or the device abstraction, I believe, GDK, which is now in a separate file in its own context. And then on top of that is the, uh, the GTK binding, on the, the red binding, the high-level binding. And here's the bug that we still need to, to solve, the last part of it. So unfortunately I need to have a, a hard-coded path uh, to my system configuration on it, but we're working on that. We'll have a look at that uh, in, a, in a while. Um, we, here we immediately get uh, to your question, because I have to find uh, the events uh, first. And uh, here you have a very small uh, uh, on action function, which is the uh, red callback. And here you see a very nice blend of uh, low level red system code and high level uh, red code. This is all of the current uh, events implementation. And uh, uh, execution wise, it starts with the uh, uh, red system code, which is in a system class here. So that means that you uh, inline uh, red system code within red. And uh, Last year, uh, Nenato already uh, implemented uh, callbacks in, uh, in Red System and that took a while to get right because it's a complex topic and you have to, uh, to uh, interface to the operating system and the C library at the right level, the level of C and assembler. Uh, but once those callbacks uh, were, uh, were correct, uh, you can uh, specify a Red System function which is equivalent to a C or assembler function and you can pass that to a operating system or C library functions as callbacks. So when that's all right at a very low level uh, you, can, uh, you can give one of your own red system functions to uh, an alien uh, subsystem and have the alien subsystem uh, call that function later on uh, at the time that is convenient for the alien subsystem. That's a, that's a callback. And the problem with it is that you don't know exactly when it will happen. Uh, so at, at any given moment within Red System, uh, it must be in a state that when a callback happens, nothing will get disturbed. That's the, uh, that's the complexity of it. Um, so uh, we already have uh, Red System callbacks and now the problem is, if you write, uh, uh, if you write this, uh, this uh, action at a red level, where it says uh, engage uh, face, or where you can write the print immediately, any, any way, uh, generic red code, uh, you have a piece of code. Uh, but it's connected to an action that happens within GTK. And GTK is written in C, so uh, you have a, a, a snippet of, uh, of anonymous red code uh, that must execute uh, on an event happening deep within an alien subsystem written in C. So how do you do that? So the first level is that the alien subsystem GTK must call back uh, into your system. But GTK is in C, so it must be a, a C-level uh, callback, so we must start with uh, the red system callback. 
So here's the, the red system callback. Uh, it says so here in the, in the inline documentation. And that's a red system function, which I call the on action in, uh, in the rebel terms, rebel naming as much as possible. Um, and uh, uh, we, uh, we connect it to uh, GTK events, so we know <coughs> that it's going to be called by GTK. And uh, GTK has a fixed format for these callbacks that we must uh, mirror here. So we know that GTK is going to call us with uh, two parameters. Uh, a, a widget reference to reference the widget that the event happened on, uh, like I explained in the high-level dialect code. Uh, code actions must be uh, able to, to be connected to the widget on wh which the event happened. So GTK does that by giving us a handle to the widget. But it's, <coughs> it's, it's a GTK uh, widget in, uh, written in C uh, in, an, in an alien system to us. And then callbacks uh, uh, usually have an, uh, a generic parameter in which you can pass your own data. And uh, if, you, if you give it a generic name, you could call it data. But I know that I want to use this generic parameter uh, to pass uh, the, uh, the action in red system that must be executed. And usually this is a pointer. So you get a generic pointer uh, that you should use uh, as a pointer to your own struct in, at the C level uh, where you can connect uh, all sorts of data that you need. So because it's one uh, pointer handle you can connect all the data that you need if you make it a pointer to your own struct. But uh, I, I did a trick here, I didn't use it as a pointer and uh, for one thing uh, uh, if you pass a pointer to, uh, to, to the red level, there, there are no pointers at the C level in red, so you, you're forced to, to handle it as an integer. And as long as, uh, as you're on a 32-bit system and integers and addresses are the same length, then it's, uh, it's not a problem. So we're handling it as an integer instead of as a pointer. And uh, because this is not checked by a C compiler or, uh, or by GTK, I can just specify it here straight away. Uh, because it's my responsibility to map them, so if I want to call it an, in an integer here, it's my responsibility to make sure that that works, because the compilers can't check it be 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 between C and red system. So it's supposed to be a pointer, but I, I use it as an integer, because I know that I don't need a full struct, I need only one value. I need only one reference to a, a, a snippet of, uh, of anonymous red code and I make it a, a little less anonymous here by giving it a number. So I'm passing an action as, an, uh, as a, a number, an integer. So we know that this snippet of red system code will be, uh, will be called by GTK on an event, on a widget. And we, we know what the widget is and uh, uh, GTK often calls it a view. And it's also called a view in the, in the syllable <coughs> GUI. Uh, so I use uh, widget and view and face uh, interchangeably uh, here. So uh, a view and a widget and, and a face are, are mostly the same at this moment. So I call it a view. And uh, 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 we know that we're in red system now. Uh, but then I thought, oh man, this, uh, I, can't, I, can't get it, I can't get into red, so I'm, I'm stuck here. I can't execute anonymous actions because yeah, I'm, I'm in red system, but uh, we're nicely from the alien GTK. We've arrived in red system, but how on earth do I get into red? Uh, and uh, a few weeks ago I asked for your plan uh, about uh, callbacks and you didn't answer it, so <laughs> I'm not sure if you saw it. I thought maybe uh, you don't uh, feel like working on it. <coughs> so I thought, well, if I want to have any kind of demo working uh, for this conference, I need to, to try to implement callbacks. And because it's such a, a, a hard topic, I thought I'm never, never going to make it. I'm, I'm never going to be able to make my own callback from red system into red while it's not, it's not supported yet. So uh, I thought that my, uh, my demo would fail because I would just have 
uh, static uh, widgets and static buttons and you couldn't click on it because I couldn't execute the, the action. So I thought, well, I, um, I really must make an attempt and I'm sure it's going to fail. So I, uh, I, uh, I let the, the red compiler uh, show its output, and my output is red system, of course. And then I tried to compile a very simple uh, function call and see what it would output in red system for a function call. And I did some uh, fuzzy thinking on it, uh, what it might mean. And I plucked out some, uh, some lines that I thought that I would probably uh, need, that it would constitute the function call. And then I used uh, some more experience on the uh, SQL line binding where I already had to do uh, unsupported marshalling of, uh, of, uh, of red values to the red system value. And there I had already seen how uh, uh, type implementations in red, uh, which are in red, in, in red system contexts, the implementation. So this is a red system uh, context in which the red integer type is implemented. And I'm passing two integers, one a view handle and, and one data handle, and they're, they're both uh, pointers, but I can handle them as integers. So if I want to have them into the red level, I have to use the integer class, the integer type. Uh, so I had already seen that every uh, type definition uh, which is implemented in red system has a push function uh, to push uh, 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 some value on the stack and actually this is very usable in the red system bindings because uh, uh, the uh, in this push function uh, the uh, red value is encapsulated so I don't have to construct my own uh, red value for an integer I can just pass a red system integer which is equal to a C integer and then the push function will uh, will uh, encapsulate that in a, in a red box value and will construct the red value for an integer for me and push it on the red stack. So this is a, a convenient function to, uh, to pass a, a, a low level uh, red system value to uh, an equivalent uh, high level red type. So uh, I plug that uh, into the uh, output of the compiler for generating a function and I thought I'm, I'm, I'm so much fiddling with uh, the red stack which is uh, internal code that you should never touch and I thought this is never going, going to work uh, something must go wrong because as I said before if you, if you want to make callbacks uh, you don't know when they will happen uh, so at, at any given moment the state uh, of your system uh, must be so that if you receive a callback it won't get disrupted and that goes if you in red system uh, if you get a callback from an alien uh, C uh, library uh, the red system uh, state must not get corrupted but that's a, a relatively uh, limited problem because red system has very little state there's uh, just a very small red system runtime Ideally, it would have no runtime at all, but it must do a bit of initialization of the operating system and the stack and, uh, and, uh, and the C library if, you, if you're using that. And uh, there are a few, uh, few runtime uh, built-in functions like print and such that you don't even get in C. But there is very little state that you must take care not to disrupt when you get a callback. But uh, uh, when you uh, uh, want a, a callback at the red level, you want a high level callback into uh, the red system, then there's an, an enormous amount of state because you get this, uh, this runtime that we uh, saw a while ago is, uh, is an order of magnitude time, 10 times as big as the, as the red system runtime. And that's all built around this, uh, this uh, stack system, this virtual machine built around the stack system. And if you disrupt anything in the stack, then everything after it goes wrong. And it can go wrong immediately, or it can go wrong a while later, and you get all sorts of instabilities. And I thought this is never going to work, because it can't be that the, the system uh, is able to receive uh, a callback at an unknown time. And the only advantage you have right now is that it's single process. So uh, the only thing you're sure of is that when you have left uh, the red virtual machine, 
and you're in, in GTK, you know that Red is not running at that moment. So you know that uh, the stack is in some defined state, uh, but it is not expected <coughs> to go back back. So uh, things will get much worse when you start multi-threading, <coughs> because then uh, at all times everything must be in, in a non-disruptible state. So because it's uh, still single processing, uh, it's, uh, it's somewhat limited, uh, but it's much more complex than, uh, than a callback uh, from, uh, from C into Red System, and we already had lots of problems with that before it was corruption free. So this could never work, uh, but it did. <laughs> it works, and, uh, and I, I don't even think I had, uh, you know, I had to fiddle around a bit. I started without parameters, of course, and that worked, and I was totally astonished. And I thought, well, let's try to compile a, an, an example with a parameter and, and plug it in. And I thought, well, no way. If you, if you have a, a function without parameters, okay, maybe it works because you don't have to push anything onto a stack. But once you start pushing onto a stack, uh, on the moment that Red is not expecting, it must go wrong. But I had to pass these two parameters. So I'm pushing those two arguments with functions that are not generated by Red. <laughs> But that I knew from uh, from the SQL like binding, uh, from marshalling. So I did not really know uh, if these functions would work in this location because they're not supposed to be there. But uh, at, at least I can read the source code, and I can read the source code of Red, and I can read that the integer push function is really very small and very simple, three or five lines, and all it does is is box the uh, the Red system integer. Into a, into a red uh, integer value. So all it has to do is add a, a, a header with an integer type and uh, and a slight yeah some stack reset uh, thing or something or not even. But the thing is, it didn't even uh, it didn't even in increment the stack count. And I thought, well, how can it know that? That, that the argument is there if you haven't incremented the stack count. But I think it does implicitly. Yeah, but I couldn't find it, so I thought, I can push this, but how does it know that it's there? But it worked with one argument. And then I thought, well, maybe one argument is default, that's logical, because you, you, you always have a return argument, so it's logical that one sl stack slot is uh, is reserved for the return argument. The REPL3 extension interface works similarly. Yeah, it's incrementing uh, the stack implicitly. Oh, the star. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I, I, I always implement. Uh, the I, stack. I, I didn't read the, read the code of that, so uh, I didn't really see it. So I thought, well, uh, it, it's it's it can be explained that one argument would work, but two arguments are not going to work because where's the worst where's the stack management? So I tried another argument, and that worked too. <laughs> In fact, so it, it works. It works okay because it's a monothread. Yeah. Uh, once we add, once we we have a multi-threading support, we will need to have one separate stack, red yeah. stack per OS thread. Yeah. That the that will be the only way to be sure to that we we don't mess up uh, the yeah. stacks with. Uh, external callbacks. Um, well anyway, this, uh, this is very 